Hey, this is Coach Frank, and you're about to watch an interview with one of my 1% women. Um, her name is Letty, and she recovered from her divorce in 30 days. Now, I know that sounds like whatever, that's just a bunch of BS, but it's not It's not the only person that's done that when they've worked with me. I have multiple, multiple people. Um, I'm gonna release another video of another 30-day testimonial also here in the next two weeks, and so make sure that you subscribe and you check that story out, but I wanna share her story because she did much more than just recover from a divorce. She became an incredible mom, um, which she already has been, but she developed new skills that she wanted to use as a mom, and she opened her kids eyes to something new and started taking a risk. And more than that, she started being intentional about designing the life that she wanted. So um, you're going to hear in her testimony how she started just kind of changing her environment. The people around her took back control of her life. And now she's genuinely feels like she's herself, her genuine, authentic, happy self for the first time in Lord knows how long. And so I really hope this story blesses you. So check it out. Obviously, Letty, you're one of my clients. If I'm being honest, you were probably my third or fourth female client because um, okay. I had only been working specifically with men. But mm -hmm. it was just so cool because my other client, um, we worked together for 30 days and she was struggling with getting over a divorce for two years. Um, oh, wow. and, and then after those 30 days, she was, she was good. She was really yeah. good. Uh, and she like developed as a mom and uh, so many different things. Um, and so I kind of want to hear from you because we've been working together now. It's been for 30, it's been longer than 30 days now, but we yeah. met for 30 days and we still have yeah. this meeting in the books. But yeah. um, I want to hear because you had some huge, huge breakthroughs. So can you walk me through like what that, what that was in your life specifically? Yeah. So I think my main thing was, I was just getting too attached to, to what he was saying. Mm. Um, so like, for example, like him moving an hour away, like that was something that I like before we talked and it was, I think our, like our, like the console yeah. uh, uh, talk before that, like I just could not wrap my head around the idea of, of him living so far, like one, because I like, I emotionally, like I wanted to still be close to him. Mm -hmm. And then to like the kids, you know, like I couldn't understand like why he was moving so far. So because like, because of that, I was putting so many things in my head, like all these thoughts, like, well, it's because of this. He has somebody else. Like he just doesn't want to be around us. You're just and creating a story, right? <laughs> it was so many different like scenarios, so many different stories in my head that I was just like, that's what made me suffer the most. Like I, like I would just like cry and cry and cry. And like, you know, when we had our first talk, it was so like, <laughs> like you were just straightforward. You were like, do you have facts? And I was like, no. And from that moment, I was like, oh yeah, this, I need this man in my life. Like he, he's gonna <laughs> tell like straight up and not what I wanna hear because my friends and my family were like telling me stuff that I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when, when we had that first talk, like you being so straightforward, like, and like, you know, explaining to me like the, you know, the thoughts and like, you know, change the story, all that good stuff. Like, like from that first, like that first meeting we had, like that same day, I was like, oh, like, I'm good. Like, that's not even like real. Like I'm putting all these things in my head and there's no facts for that, for the stuff that I'm putting in my head. And I'm just like suffering because I want to suffer. Like, for me, you know, putting these things in my head and like from that, from that call, I was just like, oh yeah, like I need this man in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, and something that I loved so much about you specifically and like working with you is that you went like above and beyond. So we mm -hmm. were working on getting over like the divorce heartbreak, obviously, which, which we did, you know, yeah. I mean? and now we're working on other things, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but you took it to another level. You said, because I remember talking to you specific and I tell all my clients, like you, you have to de design your life. If you don't design your life, you're going to end up somewhere where you don't want to be yeah. but designing. It takes intention and it takes going 
towards the thing that scares you. Mm-hmm. And there was one call that we had where you started like telling me that you had you had to cut out some friends that oh had yeah life for a minute and you were like yeah. but I finally realized like this is not where I want to go this is not where I'm at and I I just remember being like dude this yeah. this girl has gone full fledged like not just even about the divorce but her life in general yeah. which is all, what all of this is about is getting control of your life so walk me through that and walk anyone who's watching yeah. through yeah so as soon as I started to like like to start feeling better and like you know start actually feeling happy I was like okay now I need to look at who I'm surrounding myself with right because I don't drink you know I you know my diet is different than most people and it's like okay who do I want to surround myself with not necessarily not surround myself that people you know that don't drink or whatnot but like what people are going to be okay with me not drinking and without them like peer pressuring me to like drink oh just one drink like just one sip you know and so there was like this one specific friend that was just like it <laughs> it was very toxic you know her using me and like me not even realizing it but once i started to realize like the pattern with like my ex-husband and everything then i started to notice it with like this friend and i was like wait like she's using me like, you know, and, and that wasn't something that I would have ever saw before, you know? And then as I realized it, I was like, you know what, this person has to go. Like I like from one day to another blocked her from all social media, blocked her from my phone, you know, you know, just completely blocked her. And she would call me private because she knew she was blocked on everything. She would call me private. Her mom called me you know, and it was like her wanting to come back in, but mm-hmm. I was just like, no, like I can't allow you to sit here and treat me a way that I do not deserve. And I don't want to be treated that way. So you're out. And, you know, ever since then, like she's been out, she will stay out. She's not coming back in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that because you found your worth and you found mm-hmm. your value and yeah. not only that, but it's like, you know, the, the exercise that I give you guys to do, the flip the script, it's like, yeah. it's intentional because you begin to design a life that you want, not where you think you'll be, but where you would want to be, which is a big yeah. difference. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the more that you focus on that new script, the more yeah. that happens, the more where you're like, hold on, this doesn't fit this. This is not what I want in this. And then that's right. when you get to make the conscious choice. And I think it's just so powerful that you did that. And then another thing that really got me, which is honestly the whole reason why I even started helping people. And it's because of the kids. It's because of the legacy. Um, I remember you told me this on a call and it literally like made me uh, teary eyed because I was just like, dude, like this is, this is why. And I think I even told you, I was like, look, I care about you, but yeah. with respect, I care more about the legacy. You know yeah. I mean? I care more about the kids. But you said that you actually have started like working with your kids on similar things that I've been working with you with. Mm -hmm. Um, What made you want to do that? So just the way, you know, my parents never had like a good, like we never had like a good relationship or like good communication. So I feel a lot of their, their traumas and a lot of like the stuff they went through as kids and as adults and stuff you know, carried on to me and my siblings. Mm -hmm. And so whenever like the whole divorce thing happened, you know, the whole breakup and everything working with you and like, you know, working on myself, I'm like, okay, I have all of this trauma, all of this, like, not just from myself, but like from my parents, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm getting better. So like, let me go ahead and start on my kids because they've been living with me as like a, traumatized adult you know and so it's like the sooner they can start to heal and learn to communicate and learn to be happy with themselves like they're gonna be great you know teenagers great adults you know great spouses you know great parents grandparents all that other good stuff and so you know got them journals have them write at least five minutes because, you know, I have a, a preteen or a teen and 
don't want to do this. And I'm like, well, you have to write your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> write about hey, you know. <laughs> and my daughter's a little bit more open to like writing in her journal in her journal. Like I got her like a this journal where she like reflects on her day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and then I'm like, you can always just look back and like you you'll read back and be like, oh, I did this that day. Oh, I ate this. Oh, I, you know. Just for you to look back and, you know, just remember what you did. Like if you had a good day, if you had a bad day, you know, you can always go back and look like, oh, you know, that was actually a a pretty good day. I have more good days than bad days is the goal. (laughs) Yes, I love that. And it's powerful because you can't lead somebody somewhere you haven't been. And I love that you went there and then you tasted and you saw that it was good and you were It was natural. I didn't tell you to do that for your kids. I didn't say, I didn't say, I don't think anybody else told you to. I think it was just natural when you experience something that you're like, okay, this is good. Yeah. This is healthy. It's Mm -hmm. like the natural overflow is to give that to your kids. And this is why it's so key because I know we're going to continue working together a little bit that it's so key. And for anyone who's listening right now, honestly, it is so key to invest into yourself first because look at what happened. You took time, you took money, you you took precious mental capacity and you spent it on you. Mm-hmm. And then now that's overflowing onto your kids and it's only going to make them better people and yeah. from a young, young age. But that doesn't happen unless we focus on ourselves first. Just like, you know, I always talk about the Bible. Jesus said, love yourself as your neighbor. So you got to love yourself first so your cup can overflow into their lives. And I love that you did that. Like, to me, that was, uh, that was one of the most powerful moments I've had. Like there was, there's another gentleman that I have, he's a 1% man and his son sits in on all the group coaching calls. Like oh, wow. he's literally like a little 1% man. Um, wow. and so it's pretty awesome because now we're seeing people like you and people like my brother, Luke, that, and people like Casey who they're bringing their kids up in a different environment because this is the number one environment that we have yeah. and depending on what we let come in here will dictate what happens out here right, right. and so I want to ask you just one last question dude and then I'm going to let you go okay because I know you got a busy day and I got a meeting to get to here in a little bit also but um what's been the biggest difference how are you experiencing life different since we started working together oh man I feel so much better. Like I feel genuinely happy. Like before I thought I was happy, but like now I'm like, okay, this is, this is happiness. Like this is me being a hundred percent, like authentically like myself. Like I'm not hiding like one bit of myself. Like I'm, you know, just being myself. I never knew that being yourself can bring you like so much happiness like you're not hiding any part of you like which is something I was doing before without even like realizing it like I was hiding you know like a part of me and you know so I just feel so happy (laughs) I love that I love that so you went through the divorce or you're probably still going through it honestly right from last I remember um but you got divorced. How many months did it take you to start working with me until we, we, we met? Um, so I actually started working with you. I think it was like that the, within like the first two weeks that I separated. Okay, got it. Yeah, it was, it was like the first two. So, so I, that same weekend that everything happened by Monday, so everything happened over a weekend. By Monday, I already had a session booked with a therapist. And then I had you booked like for the following week. Wow. Yeah. So as soon as everything happened, I had all of my stuff booked and ready to work on myself because, you know, it was just really eye opening to go through, you know, to go through that. And I was like, okay, wait, like there's a pattern here. Obviously I need some work and, you know, (laughs) So you healed from your divorce in technically about a month and a half. Yeah, I would say four weeks, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I think four weeks, I was like, wait, what? Like, okay. And I, I remember I told you, like, this feels wrong. Like, 
I don't even, I don't even want to feel happy. Like I don't even want to feel all these good, positive emotions that I'm feeling because it feels wrong. Like, I feel like I should be like sad and depressed and like crying and, you know, not getting out of bed and, you know, not working out, not, you know, doing all these good things and it feels wrong. But then, you know, on our call, you were like, you know, all the stuff we talked about and everything. And I was like, no, like I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Cause we naturally fall into that that belief that we've created that it takes time. It takes time. It takes yeah. time. Right. And so when you started noticing, holy crap, I'm, I'm, I'm better. Yeah. And I, and this is what I preach. It doesn't take time. It takes, it takes action. Yeah. At the end of the day. And you took all the action, everything that I told you to do, you did it. And I can almost guarantee you did it daily. And you consciously made that decision every single day. And when you do that, when you begin to apply these principles and do these exercises that brings out the pain and then you uh, restore it with something great and then you start changing your focus and controlling your mind, it changes everything. Because yeah. if you don't control your mind, your mind will control you. And that's why you see people that are taking years and years to recover. Yeah. And you did it in a matter of four weeks, yeah. which is beyond, beyond incredible, right? And you're not the only one. Like I have other testimonials on my on Instagram reels where in 30 days, they're like, what the heck, dude? Uh, so I just want you to know that I am extremely proud of you. I'm so happy for you. Um, the last question, do you regret investing that much amount of money? No, I would. <laughs> <laughs> regret it not one bit like at first I was like oh you know oh because I was already investing you know more money with you know my other my therapist and everything I was like oh one more thing but but at like the console I was like no I'm I'm doing it I don't care how if it would if the price would have been double or triple I would have paid it (laughs) just after the console I would have paid it like no doubt I would have found a way (laughs) <laughs> I found a way it just that I'm telling you just that first call I was like no like I can do this but with the right people leading me you know in the path that I need to to heal you know and so well and thanks to you <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Letty I love that I love that thank you so much for um for giving me some of your time um, and we need to book that next call. Okay. <laughs>